Good morning, everybody. Pastor Steve back with you again. If you've got your Bibles close by, we're going into Acts chapter 17 today, picking up at verse 22. Uh, before I get there, though, uh, this has been a tremendous opportunity, I think, for God's people to show our communities and our world what we're truly made of. And we're seeing this from churches all over the place, doing extra, going the extra yard to try and help the people that have been the most impacted by this virus and all the precautions that we have to take, that we wisely have to take. And our congregation is no different. We're going to be doing some, some things as well, and I'll get to that in a moment. But it's times like these where really when we can't come to the church, that's not ideal, but it's going to be okay because we have to be the church. And we are not going to confi confine our mission and ministry just within the walls of a building. Now, with that in mind, let's go into Acts chapter 17. Uh, Paul has made his way to the city of Athens, and, uh, and he's been kind of touring the city and seeing all the great architecture and all those wonderful things that they have in this city. Uh, and then he comes to, to a big meeting, a leadership meeting, and Paul, in verse 22, Paul stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, People of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, to an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship, and this is what I am going to proclaim to you. So you see, we've got all sorts of people around us who do not know God. Maybe they got some ideas about God. Maybe they knew about him at one time in the past. But as for right now, in this time, with our lives being what they are today, they don't know God. They don't know who he is. They don't know how he works. Who's going to tell them? Who's going to show them who God truly is? I believe the Lord is inspiring and empowering and equipping us to do exactly that, just like he did with Paul. So Paul goes on in verse 24. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he gives, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. Everything we have comes from God. And everything that we have and all that we are is intended to glorify God. We return to him with thankfulness and praise. And yes, we even give our gifts and our offerings to him. But that's not because somehow God has a gap in his life that we're trying to fill. That's our expression of our thankfulness, our love for the God who has given us, provided us everything. But the reason why, the main reason why God has given us these gifts is not for ourselves. Certainly, he's going to provide for us to take care of our, our families, you know, our house and home, and, and try and keep us healthy and well-fed. Those are all great things and necessary things. But ultimately, the gifts of God are given to reach our neighbor. I'm reminded by this passage of the words from Martin Luther. God does not need your good works, but your neighbor does. And that's really what Paul is, is getting at here. That, that God and our relationship with God and our service to God is not confined within the walls that we have built to house our worship and our Sunday school and those other uh, ministries that we carry out. God's, God's purpose for us, his plan, his ministry is to the whole world, not just this little room within it. So Paul goes on to say, from one man he made all the nations, that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far away from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. God is never far away from any of us. Jesus says, I am with you always to the very end of time. And that includes the times when we're stuck at home together or we can't go where we want to go. But Jesus continually, he comes to us and he stays with us by the power of his holy word, by that saving grace 
that he pours out upon us every day. So we need to convey that closeness, that proximity of God to our friends and our neighbors when God presents us with the opportunity to tell them, to show them what the love of God looks like and sounds like and feels like. In verse 29, Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by human design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. Our God is a living God. Our Savior Jesus Christ is alive and well and living in Greenville, living in us. But he does not intend for salvation to stop with us, with our hearts and lives, with our families. This gift of grace is intended to be shared, to be spread all over the world. I just saw on Facebook yesterday, it was an ad from a Christian t-shirt company. And, and the t-shirt was very basic. It was black and white lettering. And it said, the church has now left the building. And that to me is exactly what God is preparing us for. Once we are able to start getting out and getting around and interacting with people again. We're not gonna confine the church within these walls just in worship, but we are going to go out and make disciples. We are going to go out and love people as Jesus has loved us. And we are actually putting together a way for us as a church family to do exactly that, to offer ourselves, our, our gifts, our abilities, whatever we have to offer, and also for others to identify what they may need in this time of crisis. And then we're gonna try and put the, those gifts and those needs together. So look for that on our church website. We'll email everybody. We'll put it on Facebook. It's coming real soon. Shepherd of the Hills Community Support. It's going to be a great ministry and a much needed one from our friends and our neighbors. Would you pray with me, please? Lord Jesus, bless us during this time that you would continue to strengthen our faith and prepare us, Lord. Equip us for that first available opportunity when that love that you have brought into our hearts and into our homes is the love that we will bring through your power, through your Holy Spirit, that love we will bring into our neighborhoods, our communities, our schools and our workplaces and everywhere else you send us, Lord Jesus. May we live the love that you have given to us. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Have a good day, everybody.